Hello everyone and welcome back to Mad for French Cars. In today's video, we're going to be replacing a coolant on this Peugeot 407 SW with 2 liter HDI engine and 6 speed manual gearbox. I would like to start my video from showing you guys my cooling system expansion tank. And as you can see here on the side, there is a max mark and there is also min minimum mark. So as you can see here, my coolant is actually below the minimum required amount of coolant in my expansion tank. So this indicates that I might be losing a coolant somewhere or it has not been topped up or replaced for a very long time. Another thing which is concerning is the color of the coolant. As you can see here, my coolant seemed to be clear, which is not the way it's supposed to be, because in these cars, you're gonna have either slightly reddish, bluish or greenish color, depends on what coolant concentrate is being used. As you can see here, I don't have any color, which suggests for me that the previous owner has used too much deionized water in the coolant mixture, or even maybe he topped it up with a tap water or something like that. I have no idea. So I'm glad I come across this issue and we're just gonna go and get it done and replace this wherever liquid is in it with a brand new coolant mixture. First thing you wanna make sure is when you sit in your car before performing this job and you put your car in ignition, your car is cold and you cannot see the high temperatures of neither your engine or your coolant. That's very important. I would not suggest to perform this coolant replacement with an engine hot as you can cause a damage to the engine. Another thing while we are here, make sure you pull your handbrake. To perform this job, we're going to be lifting the front of the car up. And in order to make sure we are safe under the front of the car, I would suggest to put something behind your rear wheels. To make sure if your handbrake fails, the car doesn't roll backwards and doesn't crash you under the car. I will be lifting the front of the car up and supporting it on the axle stands. So now once the car is lifted in the air and is secure on the axle stands you want to have a look underneath your car if you have an under engine tray. If you have an under engine tray this tray is going to have to be removed or at least moved backwards so you would be able to put like a 10 liter 20 liter container for your coolant to come out into. So, as you can see here, I have an under engine tray, which is really useful, but it's an extra headache when you need to do jobs like that. So, I'm just going to be removing this under tray now. Just a little thing to mention, guys, if you do have an engine tray, you're probably going to have some 10 millimeter bolts, some twist on kind of clips, and god knows what else you're gonna have uh, 407 that's not really a new car so people use a cable ties and all sorts of stuff to secure their um en under engine trays onto the car as you can see here i have quite a few little clips missing and i'm just gonna be undoing the ones i still have left on the car using 10 millimeter socket on that one these ones you just have to twist and then they come off as you can see here so this side is kind of loose some old tissue whatever 
and I see that I'm gonna have another 10 millimeter a bit further down. And on the other side, a bit further down, it looks pretty much the same. I seem to have another 10 millimeter here. I go out and on this side here looks like we, we have another 10 millimeter bolt and we will see what else we have here two 10 millimeter bolts I hope you can see there's a one here and another one here well, to be honest, the 10 millimeter bolts seem to be the ones who actually stays and all them turn clips seem to be the ones which I'm after sometimes starting to lose. As you can see here now, with them 10 millimeter bolts removed I can see that I'm gonna have more than enough clearance and space to actually access this bottom hose which we're gonna be undoing it to release our coolant old coolant out so if you're under tray if you have one removed out of the way I would suggest to remove that as well you will see why later on so I'm removing my I'm just putting somewhere safe and also the expansion tank you will have to undo the cap of the expansion tank and just put it on the side so for the next step I would recommend to grab yourself a couple of household gloves make sure that coolant doesn't go in your hands also a grip lock pliers and a container at least 10 liter so that the coolant wouldn't spill through the sides I have 21 liter container here which I'm gonna be using now so as you can see I put my gloves slightly on the sleeves as well because sometimes the coolant leaks through the side of a glove and into your sleeve so make sure you cover yourself properly and then we're gonna take those grip lock pliers and we're gonna be squeezing this this little clip here in order to release the hose which is here from the radiator Okay, well we have a slight problem, as you could just see, under the pressure, the clip actually slaps, uh, the clip actually snapped and it's still tightened and now we're gonna just try to make sure we take it off or at least get it loose so that we can move it a little bit out of the way without damaging a hose and as you can see the coolant is starting to release slightly so as you can see I just have sticked my container under the leaky hose and I'm gonna try to film for you from this angle so you can see me releasing the coolant
as you can see there is a coolant leaking into my container coolant is not looking good at all what I want you to do now is to go here there is a two bleeding screws there is one here which needs to be undone and there we go so I hope you can see there's one bleeding screw here so that needs to be undone and as you can see straight away I don't know if you can hear it the flow of the coolant just increased because I've undone this little bleeding thing and there is a second bleed screw as well which is on your EGR coolant and it's just here I hope you can see it's just here and we're gonna have to undo this one as well I'm just gonna have to try to get a better grip okay it's tight so I got myself a pliers but with these pliers I have to be careful I don't want to break the actual plastic where the little cap goes on to but I'm just gonna try to turn it a little bit and hopefully it turns it doesn't really want to turn so not greatest success but oh here we go just a tiny bit little by little I have to undo it here we go here we go here we go so that is getting undone maybe I'm gonna be able to do it with fingers now and yes I am so now I can hear slight air going through it and there was something else just quickly a little bit of coolant going into my um, tank here so don't lose these two bleeding caps that's important because you're gonna need them right my guys so with most of the coolant removed the next step I'm gonna do is gonna be flushing my radiator and also flushing this little um, expansion tank just a tiny bit with just a normal tap water you can use a garden hose that's the best way you just stick a garden hose in here and you know you can flush through this oil pipe going underneath this is not a big flush but anyway it's different you know separate bit um, another thing we're gonna do we're gonna flush the radiator so we're gonna disconnect this hose here i lift it up i'll pour the liquid through it and it'll gonna come out through the bottom flushing the radiator if you want to flush the actual engine you would have to remove the thermostat and do different procedure where i'm not going to be doing that right now uh, another thing to mention there is also something called the cylinder block drain plug so as much as a lot of coolant has come out already from the our engine there is still a bit of coolant left in it and in order to remove that you would have to remove a block cylinder block drain plug which is basically in a place where you're not gonna really be able to access because it's right next to the turbo and to reach that plug and not even talking taking it out and putting it back later in the place is extremely difficult so that's not practical we're not gonna be doing that today and now we're just gonna carry on and flush through the different parts which we're able to do so we're just gonna i'm just gonna pour some water through the expansion tank and i'm gonna just quickly flush it through a little bit it's not gonna be a major flush through but just a tiny bit my expansion tank doesn't look too bad so i'm not really bothered about it if you do want to remove your expansion tank and if you want to clean it up I will suggest you to undo this 10 millimeter uh, bolt in here and then there is a little clip here also as you can see here 
as soon as you undo this clip you'll be able to take off this hose and in here you're gonna have either one or two of these you have to prime it nicely on the sides gently and just pull out this bit here and your expansion tank will be um, taken off and then you can take it inside wherever clean it the way you like it my one doesn't look too bad i'm not gonna be cleaning it in this video today i'm just gonna leave it the way it is i've just run some water through it i've watched the water coming out into my container in the bottom and the water seemed to be pretty clean so i'm gonna carry on and just flush through my radiator now so the first thing you want to do is you just want to undo this this hose from here once i unclip this clip I'm able to actually move it as you can see here I can move it towards me a little bit and then I will be able to actually just spin the hose a little bit and to remove it from the thermostat housing here we are so that's the hose removed from the thermostat housing I will be pouring the water through here and it will be coming out into my container under the engine. So the best way to do this would be to put your garden hose in here and just run the water through here until the water comes out clear through the other side. I'm gonna try to put this on this bottle here like this and then hopefully doesn't really want me to do it the way I wanted to do it, but I will try anyway. And I'm gonna try to just pour the water, a lot of water, through it, give it a good flush through. And I might even go and grab myself another four or five liters of water and just do exactly the same thing. Just run it through this this house here and just flush more my radiator through go myself a little bit more water and i'm just gonna go run it through that top of the radiator hose once again and i'm gonna show you that from underneath So as you could see the water running through the radiator looks absolutely clear so i'm happy with the uh, quality of the uh, radiator inside the radiator it looks looks like there's no rust or anything like that and it's pretty clear so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be just putting this hose back together back onto here onto this thermostat housing The same procedure i'm just gonna have to put that clamp back on exact same way like it was in the same location these clamps they have a little tooth if you press it too hard the tooth gets starts to get in the way so all i need to really do is just take a flat screwdriver and lift this bit up off the other bit and then it'll just gonna secure itself So I've just secured the top radiator hose back on the thermostat as you could see and now we're gonna pull out this container with all the flush and the coolant out and as you can see here I don't know what kind of coolant was in it because it doesn't look like anything I've seen before it just looks like a dirty water if you ask me so I'm just gonna leave it this one 
as it is now because I have to remove the broken clip as you could see at the damaged clip I managed to break the clip while removing it onto the bottom hose so we're gonna have to remove that clip and then replace it uh, with another used clip but in a fairly good condition maybe even push it like this here we are so that's the that's the broken clip I had and now we're just gonna put on a, another clip this clip seemed to be fine so I'm just gonna maybe adjust my grip lock pliers and gonna try to put it back on the hose here we are that should be enough okay yeah and that looks good and just want to put it in the same position and what we can do now because I already flushed through my radiator released the coolant I can actually I'm gonna adjust my grips again and I'm just gonna try to put this hose back on here on the radiator As you can see here now, the hose is back on, the clip is back on, I'm just trying to move the clip so that it sits in exactly the same place where it's supposed to sit. There we are, it should be around here, there we are. So the clip is back on, the hose is back on now. Now we can put the under engine tray back on if you have one. So the under tray now has been placed back, we can lower the car back on the floor. Right my guys, so as you could see we flushed the system as much as we could. Uh, we connected all the hoses the way it was I left them two uh, bleeding caps off for time being because they have to be off still and I put my under tray back on I let my car go back on the four wheels I let it off the axle stands so now we can crack on and get our concentrated antifreeze coolant mixed with a deionized water um, I normally do 50-50 uh, coolant mix it all depends on the coolant specification which it can always be found on the back as you can see this one is not very strong I think because the 50-50 mix only protects it up to minus 12 but to be fair I'm not going anywhere where it's more than minus 12 so I'm pretty sure I should be all right so I'm gonna do 50-50 mix of this coolant. You might buy a coolant which is already pre-mixed. So that's straight away, you're gonna need about 8.5 liters of that and you can just put back in your cooling system. Normally it's cheaper to buy a concentrated one and buy deionized water and just mix it yourself, which, I, which is what I've done. So now I'm just gonna mix this coolant up I use 4.25 liters of 
concentrated coolant and then 4.25 liter of deionized water. That's our mixture, pretty much ready. If you have something clean, you can stir it up, but that's that's the mixture, should be 50-50. Right, my guys, so I have mixed my coolant uh, because it was concentrated, so I've done 50-50 with deionized water. As you could see, I have placed it back into the uh, same containers where with which it came with so it was the ionized water container here and the coolant container here now this is all mixed up ready to go into a cooling system and in here as you can see i have cut a um, five liter bottle and i used a pvc tape to tape it onto top of the expansion tank in order to give me a header tank to be able with a coolant to push through them bleeders here and here so what we're gonna see now is i'm gonna be pouring a coolant in here and the, the air is gonna be pushed through the system and slowly slowly the air is gonna keep coming out through here until we're gonna see a coolant with no bubbles coming through here once that happens we're gonna be putting this cap back on and then keep on putting a coolant until we're gonna start to see a coolant coming out through here with no bubbles, just a normal coolant. Then we're gonna put another cap onto here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start to pour the coolant. I'm gonna pour these uh, probably like three and a half liters in, and then we're gonna start the car and gonna pour the rest with a car already started. Now we're gonna be watching what's going on here. See if there is anything coming through. If there is anything coming through, I am just gonna be putting this bleeder cap back on. But I cannot see nothing coming through yet. So what I'm gonna be doing now, I'm gonna go inside the car. I'm gonna start the car and then we're gonna carry on with this procedure. All right, so we're just gonna start the car now. There we go, and just leave it like that. The only thing you need to make sure there is no AC or heating on because what's gonna happen is it's gonna put activate the radiator fan and no, that's not what we want. So we're just gonna leave it, everything off in AC department and we're just gonna carry on on putting the coolant into the system. As you can see here, once I start with the car, nice coolant is coming out. It was really fast. Uh, I hope you managed to see it. Uh, did manage to make a little bit of mess here. But that means the coolant is all good up to here as it was coming through nicely. So I'm just gonna keep on popping it up through here and we will be watching this space now here. Once the coolant starts to come through through the bleeder here that's when we're gonna put the cap on that one too. Very quick guys, quicker than I expected. As you could see straight away, I had a um, uh, coolant coming through that low cap there on the EGR cooler hose. 
So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna top off my expansion tank and then run the car until it's hot and then top it up the fuel as needed. a bit of coolant as you can see it's about a good half a liter extra here in a my low header tank and we're gonna wait till the car heats up to its normal temperature and thermostat opens up and then it should take some more in and then that should be job done so as you can see here I've just literally put something here to keep my car revving on 1500 rpm another thing what I can actually do is now I can put my engine cover back on there it is. as you can see there my header tank starts to bubble you see I can just before the thermostat might be starting to open up a little bit so what happened just now the temperature was almost 90 thermostat must have opened up a little bit and literally let some coolant through and then it closed again and that's why I was able to see uh, bubbles in my cooling uh, header tank in there and also that's why the temperature just dropped back to like 80 so we're just gonna keep on revving it, keep on warming it up and eventually it has to take up more coolant and the thermostat has to stay open if the temperature is 90 or above. my guys so I've just been sitting here for a while now as you can see on my header tank there is barely anything there and I think that this is it I have managed to get rid of all the air from my cooling system there might be still some air pocket somewhere in a cooling system but we're gonna find out in a longer run uh, what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna take that header tanker off just put a cap on top of the expansion tank and I'm gonna take the car later for a spin and just keep an eye on our coolant levels, make sure we're alright. But from what it looks like, that's the job done. As you can see, I left a tiny bit over maximum of the expansion tank. And that's because I believe there is still some air here in the system. So I'm gonna drive it for a couple of days. If it level from here doesn't go down to max, like just a tiny bit, what I'm gonna do is when a car is cold, I'm just gonna open up that little bleeder just a tiny bit but be careful if you do as well because if you lose that cap you know then you're gonna have to hold a thing with a finger until you find it because it just has to be done back up so i'm just gonna undo it a little bit just to release a tiny bit of you know coolant out in order just to level it up to the max and then do it up and leave it perfect because if it doesn't go down in a couple of days, I'll be confident that all the air is gone and, you know, the job is done. And we don't need to think about it again. But as you can see, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can see the color now is pink. You could see my coolant before. It was no color whatsoever. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope I showed um, enough for most of you and met your expectations. And yeah hit like button if you can subscribe any questions comment and i will see you guys in the next video